what have the last 24 hours been like for you? Yeah, I mean, they've been pretty weird. It's, uh, it's pretty weird. It's not something that happens in most careers as reporters, and certainly never happened in my career. As most folks know, my trial uh, was set for January 22nd. That's, that's not going to happen now. Uh, tomorrow on Tuesday, I'm going to change my plea to guilty. Um, I, I, I think it's important not to have a public trial for three reasons, and those three reasons are my kids. Um, I, I think it's, uh, it'd be really tough for them. It, it, it's hard enough being the kids of a public figure, uh, and I, I think it's time for them to live life outside the spotlight. Um, but it, it's been a privilege to, to serve in Congress for 11 years, three tours in the uh, Marine Corps and the, uh, the wars. So I, I think we've done a lot of great things for the nation. Well, I'm confident that the transition will be a good one. Um, my office is going to remain open. I've got a great staff. Um, we're going to handle people's cases, and we're going to pass it off to whoever takes this seat next, and, and we'll make sure that that's a seamless tra transition. Last year, uh, I was the only Republican to, to be elected to Congress in Orange County and San Diego. I, I think it's important to keep the seat a Republican seat. The congressman was seeking re-election, but typically a guilty plea would include an agreement to step down, right? Yeah, it would include, yeah. Okay. And so um, he has not announced uh, his intentions to resign or withdraw from the race, right? Either of us. I mean, this is a guy who spent $600 of donor money flying a rabbit across the country. Go edge to edge with that. Yeah. I think I'm most gratified that Morgan has been vindicated. The amount of pushback she got personally from this member of Congress was inexcusable. And the denials and the fake news arguments that he put forward were um, nothing short of despicable. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's nice that, uh, that the system does work. Congressman, are you planning to resign? Good morning, guys. Are you planning to resign, sir? Are you planning on resigning? Are you stepping down? You said in the past you did nothing wrong. Why, why change your plea now? Congressman, are you going to ask for a pardon? Go ahead. KUSI, check it out. Hunter pleads guilty to one count, admits mistakes in campaign finance case by Morgan Cook, Christina Davis, and Jeff McDonald. The campaign finance prosecution against Representative Duncan Hunter took a momentous turn Tuesday as the Republican congressman from Alpine admitted criminal wrongdoing in a guilty plea that effectively ends his political career and positions him for the possibility of prison. In a hearing that lasted no more than seven minutes, Hunter admitted to a single count of conspiracy to convert campaign funds to personal use. In doing so, prosecutors have agreed to drop the other 59 counts against him. 
When U.S. District Court Judge Thomas J. Whalen asked how he pleaded, Hunter answered guilty. Hunter said little else during the hearing. Okay, I'm good, I think. Lipstick, and then we're out. Congressman Duncan Hunter could spend five years in prison after pleading guilty to misusing campaign funds. He was accused of spending $250,000 on personal expenses, including dinners and vacations. Hunter switched his plea yesterday after fighting the charges for more than a year. Well, Morgan Cook, the reporter for the San Diego Union Tribune, joining us now with more on the investigation into Hunter. Morgan, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Uh, I tell you what, before we get started, uh, when you go to journalism school, this is kind of why you get into in this line of work. The media's been attacked a lot the last couple of years. What they tell you in class is always hold the powerful accountable, follow the money. You did all this. How did it all start for you? Here it is, Wednesday, April 6th, 2016. A scandal is born here on B2. And uh, it says FEC probes Hunter's use of campaign funds. And somehow my editor got a hold of that letter, which was public, sitting there on the website, the mm -hmm. Federal Election Commission website. He put it on my desk. Then that night, I said to my editor, I'm just going to check back through some of the older reports just to make sure that this is, you know, an isolated, just a one-off. And he said, okay. So I did. And I found that it, it did not appear to be a one-off. Was there a moment when you were looking at all this stuff where you just were like, something's just not right? Yes. Was it at the beginning, the middle? When tell me about that moment that you said something's something's. Because when you smell. say you saw all that weirdness, yeah, the, I mean the flags are going off all over the place in your head at this mm -hmm. point, right? Right. Well, I mean they started to yeah because when I went back and I looked at the other filings, I'm like, well, why oral surgery? Why a garage door? Like those are things that you just don't typically, at least in my experience, you rarely sure. see in campaign finance reports and I was just thinking like I need some answers about this. There were there were expenditures at, at uh, SeaWorld, at Legoland, there were expenditures at Barnes and Noble and Pier One and Macy's. There were expenditures uh, for um, you know at bars and really fancy nice restaurants. There were Uber rides, lots of Uber rides. There were Lots of gift baskets. But you never then use campaign funds. I've never funds used campaign for, funds for personal purchases ever. Okay, can you never try to mischaracterize no those expenses. No way. Did you take a trip to Italy and try to get a tour of a naval base? Yes. And when you didn't get that, did you say F the Navy when that didn't happen? No, I, I don't know. But I was in the United States Marine Corps. I'm sure I've said something of that sort at some point in time. And so you say you've never used any, any of your personal, any of your campaign funds for personal purchases. Correct. The U.S. attorneys obviously, obviously have done their investigation. They say you have. Can you prove that you've used personal funds? We're going to. We're going to court. So you think you'll be able and to? And I'm going to win in court and, and win my election, and we'll see where we are, right? It's we, they, 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 they never talked to me. The, never. The, in two years, the Department of Justice has never called me. This way? Never, never talked to me by, by phone. Hunter had spent years battling back at the charges against him by crying fake news and alleging that prosecutors were politically motivated. On December 3, 2019, outside the Edward J. Schwartz Federal Courthouse, he told the country that he'd made mistakes. But that's not how plea deals work. Inside that same courthouse a week earlier, Hunter had signed his name on page 12 of the plea agreement, stating, under penalty of perjury, that he agreed with the facts laid out in his deal. These were the facts. Between 2010 and 2016, Hunter and his wife conspired together to knowingly and willfully convert campaign money to fulfill personal commitments, 
obligations and expenses. The money had been used for their own personal benefit and enjoyment. They had concealed the personal nature of the expenses through false reporting. They'd committed overt acts to further the conspiracy. And they'd admitted to doing this with at least $150,000 of donor money. Since that first letter from the Federal Election Commission back in 2016, Hunter had bought himself more time in one of the most revered, solemn, powerful jobs in the world by attacking everyone who dared raise questions about his actions. And he'd spent more than $800,000 additional campaign cash to mount his legal defense. But in the end, there was one thing that money couldn't buy, his innocence. That's it. That's it? That's it. What do you think I've missed? I don't know, all the media spots have blended together now. I, I'm so tired, I don't know. I don't think you've missed. Let's see, it talks about What's, um, when do you expect this to be over for you? Oh, um, after his sentence? I think it'll be over when, once he's sentenced. Are you looking forward to this being over? Uh, I mean, yeah. It's been going. It's been going on a really long time. I guess I wouldn't say that I'm looking forward to it being over, um, but it it um, it has been going on for a really long time, and I, I, I keep feeling like any day now. <laughs> but Up next on the 50th. You know, I think that, you know, you mentioned you were a little bit surprised. I think, you know, maybe other folks were a little bit too. And um, maybe even a little bit scared, 